I'm so glad. I'm a part of the family of God. One of the verses that that song says, when one has a heartache, we all shed a tear. We've got victories to rejoice in, but there's tears being shed today. Rightly so. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain. While you're standing, please reach over, taking your Bibles and turning to several readings that will need some explanation. There's much said in the Bible. How can you see your brother in need and Close your bowels of compassion. I want you first to go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 3. Verse number 6 reads this way. But Christ as a son over his own house. Whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing and the hope firm unto the end. Amen. There you have a house. He is the son over his own house. I would ask you to go next with me. To the book of Ephesians chapter 3. And verse 15. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We have a house. We have a family. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 21 and 22. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto in the holy temple in the Lord. In whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Somebody's got to touch God to help me preach. This morning, would you be that one? Pray for me. Thank you, and you may be seated. In these readings, you have about these temples. You have a reading about every family. But whatever the verbiage is of these verses, they're talking about the same thing. Both of these apply to the church of Jesus Christ. 
In the beginning of this reading, the church is looked at as a collective, corporate, aggregate body. It is one, but it is in many parts. You have these several buildings, but you have that one temple. Build it together for a habitation of God by the Spirit. When you look at this, when he talks about the family, what he is, if you look that up, a literal rendition of that is the family in every part. Paul said, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Here you have a family. Here you have a father. All in the same reading. You have the mention of heaven and you have the mention of earth. But every bit of that there's many that have gone before us. Many that are our relatives and our loved ones. But they without us will not be complete. We may not always understand these kinds of readings in the Word of God. In the book of Hebrews, that they without us would not be complete. You know why? Though I'm a part and you're a part. But there is that whole. As I think of what we have recently experienced and are going through. That when I began to look at this. Friday night, all day yesterday. I found some things that to me meant something. Really when you get into the mention of a family in the word of God, you almost have to get first of all to the New Testament. And I believe I can prove this to you. Because these are the words that make up much of the writings of the New Testament. Father, sons, brethren, child, children, household. Holy men of old wrote as they were moved upon by the Spirit. There is something that we need to recapture about what I'm going to say to you today. These are words of Christianity that they may not mean anything anywhere else. So I begin to think. If these are the things that go to make up the subject of a family in the Bible, what are some of the themes of that family? You cannot get beyond the word love. It's difficult to try to deal with, to work with, pray for, counsel with a fragmented family. I know children that do not care for their parents, parents that do not care for their children. I do not understand it. I don't comprehend that. My mom and dad had five children. Connie, Robert, Charles, Catherine, Gary. I can remember a time when about the only thing that was in our house was love. Everybody else had the fancy gifts. I've told you this before, and it's not humorous, it's just the facts. 
that many times for Christmas, all that I got was a three pack of underwear. Maybe an apple, maybe some nuts. I got an amen from this one over here. He knows I'm telling the truth. But there was love. My dad on that workman's salary, we didn't have, we, we couldn't even buy a muffler for the car when it fell off. We're the family of seven packed into a little Plymouth automobile, blowing smoke, dragging a tailpipe, and backfiring going down the road. That's us. But we had love in that home. I've received fewer whippings than I deserved. But in receiving those whippings, I've had my mother cry when she had to give me a whipping. There is no greater theme in the family of God than love. God is love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Love is what the cross is all about. It's what everything is about. I believe all of this is connected with the Christian family. When you really begin to think about the Christian family, I can only in my poor way describe it as I see it in the Word of God. But it means a lot to me that as I studied this, looked at this, that really what I'm doing if I could put it this way, I'm looking into the mind of God. His ways are as high above my mind as the heavens are above the earth. I can't know them. I can't find them out. But here I am trying to look into the thoughts of God, into the mind of God, into the reasons of God. Why did he make you? Why did he make me? Why did he make this? God is complete within himself. He didn't have to have me or you, but he made us. I began to think that everything that I'm going to say to you today, I believe, has come out of God's concepts, out of God's own thought. And much of that has to do with how he would comprise a family. We all know what children are. They're a heritage. They're a gift of God. When Derek and Sheena gave birth to Jordan and Jaden. That was bone of their bone, flesh of their flesh. Jordan, 16 years old. They had him a little longer than that 10 year old Jaden. But they trained, taught, clothed, fed, instructed, corrected. That's what parents do. But in a whisper of time, that was taken from them. We all ask ourselves the same questions. 
What do I do? What do I say? What, what is humanly possible to relieve the burden of those parents? That was their only two children, brother and sister, killed at the same time. That was Roger and Sheila's only two grandchildren killed at the same time. In a vapor of a moment, they were gone. I believe myself, I'm going to keep it together. That God put the family for such times as this. I'm sure an embrace between the parents with that commonality of sharing that life. I'm sure that it means more than me calling them and letting them know how sorry I was. God did not just make you an individual. That's what I'm trying to say about we're fitly framed together. We are individuals, but we comprise the temple. In other words, I'm not you and you're not me, but we're all a part of the same. When God made Adam, and from there began, you know, you go out and you multiply, you replenish the earth. God was not just producing people. God had a plan that out of those people, there would come a different people and they would comprise his family. You may be a part, we are all a part of a family, but not everybody's a part of his family. But everybody that's a part of his family, when one shares a heartache, we all shed a tear. Had a friend call me yesterday. I've not heard from in years. He lives in Illinois. I love that guy as much as anybody I know. Time just comes and goes. But he called me and he told me, he said, my son, is a weatherman and newsman in Springfield, Missouri. He has been hired by the Fox Network in Houston. Of course, I had all of this on my mind. Do you know someone that can help him? I'm talking about a dad in Illinois, a man that's in Missouri, I guess it's he didn't say Missouri or Illinois. I know there's Springfield, both places, wherever. But do you know of anybody that can help him look for a residence? Anybody? And he began to go through what a change of life in his son's life was going to be. I was thinking about this. I walked to Houston. I'll do whatever I can. You know why? That brother that called me is a part of my family. His son is a part of my family. If you see your brother in need, how can you close your bowels of compassion? We have forgotten compassion. 
We've lost compassion. But yet Jesus, being touched with the feeling of our infirmities, had compassion. This isn't just for what we are immediately facing, but it is a lesson to you and to me as we go forward. I would direct your, path, your next thought to the beginning of this Pentecostal experience in the book of Acts. I can tell you, having sat there at that desk, that there is a predominating family spirit in the very first chapters of the book of Acts. It's recorded this way. They continued steadfastly in the doctrine, apostles' doctrines, breaking bread. Going from house to house. In its inception, if you will, in its perfection, as the beginning, God put in there that they went from house to house. They broke bread. I know the teaching of the Word of God in these things. But you can see that they're spiritual homes and they were spiritual homes become the domestic center of everything of their life. Brother and sister, I wept until I don't know if I can weep anymore. But we are missing it in so many ways. Can we in some way hear the word of God and come back to this place? We cry for a move of the Spirit of God. I believe if God is going to move in the way we want him to, we've got to go back to the way it was in the beginning. I've been your pastor for 25 years. Many of you have never visited my home. Many of you I've pastored for a great number of years. I've never visited your home. I'm inviting all of you to my house anytime you want to come. Hope I'm free to go to your house. You know why? Because this is the way God built it. This is the way that God put it together. I'm going to take it one step further. They had all things common. I preached the camp meeting in the state of Maine, Mars Hill, Maine. I think three occasions. One occasion in the morning service, I'm preaching morning and night. Mornings, maybe a couple of hundred nights, maybe five, six hundred people. And I'm preaching and I bring out of having all things common. That was in the morning service. A lady come to me and she said, I don't like that scripture. I don't believe God should take from me and give to someone else. You can run into a lot of opinions. You can run into a lot of things. I don't believe with the federal government that talks about 
sharing wealth. But I do believe in that Bible yes. that what belongs to one in that family, the hand can't save the foot. I don't need you. One part of the body can say, I don't need you. All of us need someone. Sheena and Derek need a family. Roger and Sheila need a family. We can't be Jordan and Jaden to them. God's got sufficient grace to comfort them. But I wonder, what is, how would God use me? How would God use me to help them? If you're not compassionate, you won't even try to find out. My wife and I will be going over there. We will leave church this morning. <clears throat> Sister Marilyn, can I tell what you told me? She can't remember what she told me. When she called me, all I could say, Sister Marilyn, the second time she called me, the first time was to pray. It had just happened the second time. I couldn't understand the word she was saying. But I did get this much. I, she calmed down. I did get this. Our babies, she did not give them birth, but they're her babies. I did not give them, my wife, I give them birth. But they're my babies. They're my babies. My grandson is 21 years old. Is he here this morning? Okay. My granddaughter is 16 years old. My daughter is down in the TV suite. You go ask her, what does your daddy call your children? How are my babies today? What are my babies doing today? When you're my age and that, they're that age, they're my babies. Marilyn said, my, baby, my babies are dead. That's the way we should feel. Let me say something that in this context, I even hate to have to bring it up. But if we're going to have things common, and if we're going to be a brother and a sister and a help to one another, we've got to get out of all this mine, ours. Let me throw this in, not in my notes. Right now, I don't believe any of the family members cares who's the president. I don't think they care the only thing they know is their grief, their sorrow. It's more than they feel that they can bear. I'm gonna tell every one of us, and I'm not talking about a 30 second or a five minute. God said, you bring your needs to me you bring your cares to me. You share that with me. 
They don't need a five-minute prayer. They need a prayer that will touch the heart of God. And God will be moved on their behalf to do what your food, your clothes, your words could never, ever touch. We need that all common. When one has a heartache, we all shed a tear. What we have now, when you talk about the church, you have a place to go preach. You have a place for some kind of a special form. There's a lot of other things. But those things are foreign to family. Let me put it this way. When families get together, the family circle has come. You don't have any special forms. What you do is you give a date and a time and a place and you show up, your family. Gary and Charles will be going to Mississippi next Saturday, the 21st, for the Turnage Family Reunion. I've got to stay here to get ready to preach. I can't, I can't go there. I've got to get ready to preach, and I'd rather preach anyway. But there would be people that come from, last time I was there, they came from the state of Washington. They came from, of course, Mississippi, Texas, Arkansas. I can't, I can't think of all the places. But we had a commonality, a purpose. We were all the same family. When I went, whatever I would have worn casually to go to Walmart, go to this store, go to that place, go here, I wore the same thing. I did not try to put on some kind of an air, is what I'm saying. When we come to this house as a family, enter in, in the, his courts with praise. Enter in with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. That's a family. We come as congregants. For the most part, to watch somebody on the platform perform. That's sick. That corner to that corner, that corner to that corner, that balcony to this bottom floor. We're family. God ordained that. God ordained that. Do you hear me? God set that plan in motion, not me. He's the one that had him breaking bread. He's the one that had them going from house to house. You may not find that a lot in the Old Testament, but that is the basis and the solid, the solid ground of the New Testament. I believe that. We've gone a long way from God's pure thought about what he wants out of his own people. these places to preach. Most people that come here don't have anything in common. There's people here that would rather be in another church. They're not comfortable here. There are things that go to make up that comfortable situation. 
God said as many as I love, I chasten. He that is without chastisement is a bastard in your Bible. I looked up that word bastard years ago. It means illegitimate. Wrongly conceived. Oh, we can still say brother. We can still say father. We can still say household. We can still say sons and daughters. But it takes that special bonding of God Almighty to take that individual part and make it the temple. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Sister Shirley, I didn't see it. When I asked the question a while ago, I did not see that you were here. But she and I, in her shop, some months ago, not too many months ago, we're talking about the drowning of those children from Faith Assembly and Vider. You know what? People still talk about it. People still grieve. I can tell you this. I had to conduct, and I've never told it, I don't think, had to conduct a funeral of a little girl that lived in Houston. She was riding her bicycle. She was kidnapped, sexually molested, and murdered. Had to preach that little girl's funeral. It is such an event, I don't think about it, I don't talk about it. I can just picture that little girl on a bicycle screaming at a man that would take her off that bike. Please, sir, no, don't quit. Mom, my daddy, come get me. Help me. Don't let this. That's all I can get in my mind. God said it would be better for you to have a millstone tied about your neck cast into the sea than to hurt one of his children. We better learn to keep our mouths shut. I tell you what, when I first started preaching, I pulled a chair up right here. I'm following a legend. I'm following a man that has preached all over the world. Some of you will remember it. I pulled up a chair and sat right here. I said, I want to tell every one of you that I am releasing you from this church. If you do not want me to be your pastor, I will help you find a church. I will help you find a church. Just don't lose out with God. I want to tell you again this morning, if I'm not fit to be your pastor, I will help you find one. But whatever you do, do not get out of the family of God. Right. Don't remove yourself, and not everything that calls itself the church is the church. I'm going to have to close somewhere here. I have to get a hold of myself. We don't know what it is to share, have that commonality. What God wants us to do is to enter into one another's lives with the view of being helpful. He wants me to get into your life when your boy had that knee surgery 
a week ago Friday. I'm sorry I lost that text. Get involved, but do it with this thought. I'm going to help them. I'm, I'm going to help them. In other words, those words that are so important in the word of God, I'm not just going to use the word Father. There's many, not many, there's a few in this church that I repeated this to. There was a man that went to this church while the musicians are coming, he came from a broken home. Hard. Mother holding down two or three jobs, whatever it was. He was in this church and I went to him. I called him by his name. And I told him, I said, what you are missing you never had that daddy in your life. I'm going to be your daddy. I'm not going to try to take the place of your dad. He never would let me. And I did not know then what I know now. Brother Clinton and always called me son. That was a cherished name to me. Every time, son, come here, son, this, son. He had a biological son he loved more than me. I understand that. I know that. But in the context of that word to me, son, but he, he got into my life. He got into my mind. He got into my soul and my spirit. I really thought that I would be able to complete this this morning. But you're going to have to come back when I complete this, and it may not take me long, that there is something that goes on institutionally. We recognize graduates this morning some high school, some universities. It's one thing to be educated institutionally, but it's an altogether different thing to be educated in that family. I'll deal with that tonight. Don't know how far beyond that I'll go. That's the best education. I can picture my wife when Hope, our granddaughter, was this high, she got a little stool, pulled it up to the sink. Now, honey, you put this egg, you, you break this egg and you put it in that bowl. She's training her, she's teaching her. That's better than going down to Ray O's bakery. They don't care about her. They don't love her. But that grandma did. I'll deal with that tonight. Can I get you to bow your heads with me? Father, I don't know if I said anything to help anybody, but thank you for helping me keep it all together. That I would be able to say what I did say. If I'm not mistaken, Lord, this time last week, Jordan and Jaden were in Victory Temple, sitting by Grandma. How far away have they removed themselves this morning? Only as far as it is into the bosom and the presence of God. 
Father, we as a church pray for the Brown family and the Coleman family. And I pray that you would give us words and things to do and say that would convey that love. But baptize us in love today. Not just for that critical hour, but as every day that goes forward. Jesus, I cast myself upon you. I present myself to you a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Spread me out as you would choose. Break me in the way that you would choose. Multiply me in the lives of others. Don't let us just be children of God in word. But Lord, you get involved in our lives. Don't let us just be brothers and sisters in word. But oh God, bring us together in that unity that can only be found in the Holy Ghost. In your name I pray. Amen. And amen.